Hello friends, I am going to do a flip through of my Hobonichi Cousin Spring Start for the month of April. I started this on technically April 3rd, but I back planned through the 1st um, because that's when this planner started. It is my health and wellness journal slash planner slash habit tracker and I am 100% in love with it and I'm definitely going to be using a cousin for my catch-all and my memory keeping next year. And I think I'll probably get another spring start next year for my health and wellness and just keep it going. Um, since I started really focusing on that in April, I think it'll be cool to see every year, you know, just how it progresses. Anyways, I wanted to do this separately from my other journal flip throughs, which I just did and uploaded um, a little bit ago. So you should be seeing both of these uploaded around the same time, but I just want to have a playlist where I only have my cousin because I don't know. I just love it. It's special. <laughs> it is set apart from the rest. Okay. So I do have a setup video and just how I intend to use all the sections on my channel already so you if you saw that you've seen all of this but I'll just do a full kind of flip through since I've only been using it for a month and just show you how I've been using it how it's been working and all of that so this is the cover some of these are from pip sticks some of them are from Pinterest and um yeah I think that's it I don't have anything in here yet I only had this sticker before I've added these other stickers and I'll probably just continue to add as I uh, print things out or find things that I want to put in here. This is my period tracker. I think this is a really good way to see a good overview of the year and just how that's going. Then in this uh, yearly index, I have my habit tracking. So this habit tracking I was doing in the, the Wonderland 222, but I moved all my health related things over here and I am really enjoying this. I have been so consistent this month and I'm so, so proud of myself. In fact, some days when I just don't have the will to complete what I need to complete, the one thing that makes me do it is wanting to be able to check off the box. <laughs> so this for me is extremely motivating. For some people, it probably might not be. But for me, I want to really like have every single box checked. So with the vast majority of this, I do. Um, I On the first, I wasn't really fully started yet. So I missed a couple there. But Consistently, I've done three weight training workouts a week, which is so awesome. And uh, I've done 10,000 steps every day. These two that have dots, I was just under 10,000 steps, but like just by a couple hundred. Um, and that's okay with me because overall, I'm more concerned with the weekly average. And some days I'm like 14,000, some days I'm 12,000. So I'm okay with that. But ideally, I would have liked to have over 10,000. But those days, it just was not, it just didn't happen for whatever reason. Um, yeah, so just really proud. Um, the yellow is my sleep hours. And then the dot graph is my energy levels. Overall this month, I've had a lot higher energy than I have the past several months. You can see there's a couple like low days. So one, two, three, four days that were low energy. And then um, a few days that were really high energy. Three, four, like all of these were pretty high energy. And then most of it is just like mid energy average throughout the day. Like some parts of the day I'll be high energy, some parts I'll be low, but overall it's like mid. So that's really cool for me to see because I was having a lot of low energy days before and it's just exciting to see that go up. So yeah, next month I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm still gonna be tracking all this stuff, but uh, for sleep, I'm not gonna do this kind of graph anymore. I just felt like, I don't know, I just felt like it took up space and I, would, I just wanna try it differently, so we'll see. But I'm gonna do, I'm just going to write the amount of hours that I slept instead of the bar graph. I'm going to highlight the box with the energy level that I felt, so. <clears throat> 
High energy will be pink, medium energy will be this orange yellow, and low energy will be blue. And I might also put a number in that as well. And then I think it'll be cool to see like overall the colors of the month, like how many high energy days I had, etc. And then my day of the cycle, I'm still putting there just like I had over here. So we'll see how that goes. <clears throat> then I have a little bookmark here that's connecting the week and the month. So that is like really handy and easy for me to flip through every day. But on the monthly, I am still tracking my macros, my steps, and my exercise minutes. So that's going really well. I'm also tracking and highlighting which workouts I do on which days. So you can see every week has had three days, except for this week, which I'm going to be working out tonight. So that's good. I think this is a really good and useful view for me. Um, I've been trying to do lower carb, not low carb or keto, but just lower than I was. I started the month and I was getting around 150, maybe sometimes even 200 carbs per day or grams of carb per day. And that's just too high for me, I feel. So I wanted to lower it. And overall, I've done a really good job. Yesterday was the highest day since the first day. Um, and it's just interesting to see how those correlate with my energy and just what, what else is going on. I mean, it's also intricately involved. There's so many factors to energy and all of that. So whatever, but I do like to see it. I love seeing my steps, how consistent I've been and just like, I just, I think this is so satisfying for me. And also protein. Like I've really been focusing on getting over 130 grams of protein every day. And so I'm really liking seeing that as well. It just, it's building a habit. It's building a pattern. It's building consistency. It's building discipline. And yeah, it's working for me. So I will be doing the same thing for May. And I don't see anything that I want to change yet or any reason to change anything yet. But I do have a doctor's appointment on May 9th. So I might ask her for feedback of like what would be helpful for her to see as she's like assessing my health and my hormone levels and things like that. Um, I'm curious if there's anything that she would suggest that I track that I'm not tracking or whatever. We'll see. And then on the weeks, I started out doing my food that I'm eating and I'm writing it down at the time that I'm eating. And then I was writing down how I was feeling like in the weekly view as well. Um, and then I was writing the details of my workout, like what exercises I did at the bottom. And this was fine, but I felt like I wanted to see a bit more my energy throughout the day. So on the next week, I started using highlighters to indicate what my energy level was at certain, at whatever time of day. So over here, I have my key. The orange is high energy. Green was medium. Blue was low. I did change that this last week, but um, I feel like, and then I'm only writing my food in here. I'm not writing any symptoms that I'm feeling. So, except for this day, because I hadn't started it yet, but... I feel like this is a really good view because I can easily see, okay, I had I felt pretty high energy part of the day for four days. Most of the week I was just mid and some days I was like extremely tired. And it's funny too because I can see like the certain hours that I tend to be extremely tired. So yeah, I like this visual of seeing the energy levels throughout the day. And I just keep this on my desk. So Anytime I think about it, I'm just taking it out and highlighting it and it's not hard. It's not hard to remember and yeah, I really like this. So the next week I did the same. I used the same colors. This week I was much higher energy for some reason. Not sure why. Probably because it was the second week of my cycle, um, which I started writing at the top the cycle day. So yeah, and then there was just a lot less low energy times during this week, which I found really interesting. Then this week that we're on now, um, I changed my colors just cause I wanted to, I felt like having bright colors. I'm going to try and keep them these colors for the rest of the year, just for consistency. Um, so the pink is high energy, orange is medium and blue is low. Interesting. Cause I feel like I have, 
high energy and low energy a lot this week. It's just, <laughs> and it's always just like right in the afternoon that I start to feel like exhausted. So interesting. I can't say that I know exactly what to attribute that to, but it's interesting. And I like seeing my food. I'm very consistent with my breakfast. Like I have the same thing for breakfast every day, two eggs, avocado and chicken sausage. Cause I'm finding that having a high protein, um, high fat, well, it's not super high fat, but high protein, high fat breakfast is like so energizing to me. And I'm so full for like four hours after that and feeling really good too. So, and then I am eating different things for lunch and dinner. I did notice that the more I have just protein drinks or protein bars, hello, there's a bug, get away. Um, as I'm having protein drinks and protein bars, that's not very satiating for me. And I think that might be like an issue with the energy as well. So I'm going to try to really make an effort to cook actual meals instead of just trying to get protein from whatever supplemental stuff like that. Um, even though it's convenient and sometimes I need that convenience, I just also need to be more disciplined in cooking real meals. So yeah, I think my takeaway from this month is not so much tracking what I'm eating, but tracking my energy. I just really find that interesting and hopefully will be useful in a practical way at some point. Um, but yeah, I like seeing what I'm eating too. So I'm going to keep that the way it is also. Then we go to the dailies and I have my little vision board collage. I'm surprised how much I actually go back and look at this because typically when I do a vision board or something like that, I rarely ever will go back and look at it. It's more of like a deco thing for that moment. But I look at this a lot and it, probably because it always just flips open to this page because of all the pictures on here, it's kind of heavy. So it just happens to open to this when I'm trying to get to the dailies. But then I'll sit there and I'll like look at it for a minute and it it is inspiring. <clears throat> so yeah, sorry. <clears throat> my throat always forever. Um, but yeah, I really am just loving this. I, I do get inspiration from that. So I think that's really cool here. I had, um, some before pictures, so I'm covered those up and then every day I'm just writing a little bit of how I'm feeling, but mostly with relation to my body and health. I'm not really writing about like the events of the day unless it pertains to my body and health like I'm so exhausted because of this or whatever um and then I'm also doing little commonplace things on most days like quotes or something I learned that I found interesting um just things that I've noticed workouts that we've done here was like a little thing that I saw on Instagram that I thought was so uh, relevant to a fitness journey. Um, this, I tried this new little like instant coffee that has ashwagandha and mushrooms in it and I like that. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts about self-discipline, um, mental strength, resilience, growth, and so writing notes on those or quotes from those a lot of the time. And I'm really enjoying that because it's so cool to just be able to look back and see, you know, what I've learned, what I've implemented, things like that. Um, every day I'm writing my habits at the top here uh, just to keep on track, even though it's a bit redundant. I do enjoy checking those off. And yeah, so there's not usually a ton of like interesting stuff over here in my journaling. It's just like this day. Last night I stayed up till nearly midnight watching The Resident. <laughs> Ugh, Elise, your goals don't disappear on the weekend. I had to get up early-ish today to get to the laundry route, so I'm tired. I walked to, where did I walk? I walked to Starbucks after starting my clothes, which also means I didn't eat before coffee. Oh well, it's okay, we keep moving. <laughs> And then that day I was tired, so I just wrote push through. So it's like nothing revolutionary or is like super exciting there. It's just, this is how I'm feeling. I'm motivating myself to get through the harder days or the times when I don't feel like doing it. And I don't know, it's just working for me. I love it. I love this quote too, because this day I actually was feeling like 
this was like the second day of my period and I was just like, I don't want to like exist today. And I put that quote and it helped me. Um, I watched something with David Goggins, who's just a beast. And he was like, friction equals growth. There was a lot in that that I could have written down, but that was kind of like the main thing that stuck with me. Um, and it's true, like growing requires pushing through so much resistance because growth does not happen in the realm that you're used to. It doesn't happen in the comfort zone, which is so cliche, but it is actually so true. And so, yeah. Um, what else? I tried making peanut butter protein cookies. I followed a recipe that I found online. It was so disgusting. So disgusting. The texture, the flavor, everything. I don't know. <laughs> Not cool. Um, these are, I was listening to a podcast, like everyday foundations that we have to redo every 24 hours. Every 24 hours, we have to sleep. Every 24 hours, we need to get nutrients. Every 24 hours, we should be getting movement of some kind. Every 24 hours, we need light at the right times. Every 24 hours, we need to um, have some kind of relationship interaction. Like that fills us emotionally. Um, and then every 24 hours, we have to continue to choose the mindset that we have and act upon that rather than getting stuck in negative things. So I thought that was cool. Um, and then this was another podcast with Jocko Willink and he's just so awesome. I just really appreciate him and his, um, work that he does, which is just so motivational. Uh, so I think this was on a uh, life of a CEO podcast was interviewing Jocko and just these quotes stood out to me. So I wrote those down. These are my favorite pages when I have like some kind of common placing on them. Um, this was a printout from my fitness pal of like my calories for each day and the average for the week. So that was cool. Uh, this day we went to the gym and did a full body workout, which was so hard. <laughs> um, this day, my best friend sent me some, like a huge box of supplements, protein powder, different things. And so out of the ones that she sent me, the ones that I'm starting to take now are these three. So I wrote down when I should take them and like what they're for down here. Um, and then this was from another podcast. This was a hard day for me. Um, and this kind of really stood out to me. It was Jocko again on another podcast talking about like some, how we, how we handle losses in life, whether it be a loss of you know, like a goal, like you tried for a goal and you didn't make it or you failed or you were competing in something, you know, he was talking about sports, that kind of thing. Um, or even like he was in the military and so you go and you fail a mission or God forbid, like you lose a guy on your team and just talking about like resilience and getting back up and like being able to handle those losses. And he said, there's no perfect scorecard in life. None of us has a perfect score where we always win everything we try to do. No trials, just wins across the board. Nobody has that ever. <laughs> and so um, he was talking about how the action never stops. Like you take a loss, guess what? Action is still happening around you. You have to keep going. Um, so take the next step forward, press on toward the goal, which is actually a Bible verse. I press on toward the upward call of Jesus Christ. And so, yeah, that was just really motivating to me on this day. And I started writing the cycle day down here. This is the amount of days that I have been doing this protocol, um, sticking with these habits, which is really cool because April started on the first Monday. And so the days that I've been doing it have aligned with the day of the month. Obviously that will stop in May, but um, yeah. So I'm gonna continue writing this across the top because I find it so motivating to, to be able to write day 28, day 29, you know what I mean? Like, and imagine when it's March 31st of next year and I'm writing day 365. I'm just so excited for that. So, um, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? That's 
comforting, motivating. Every action builds momentum. Which direction are you building momentum in? That is so true. Like if I want to give up on my habits and I do that for a week, that's building momentum in that direction. But if I stick with my habits and I'm pushing through and reaching my goals, that's building momentum in the direction that I want to. And obviously momentum builds on itself and you get dividends and it's just cool. So this was yesterday. I did a glute a hamstring workout on uh, Thursday and I was so sore yesterday from that. So that was cool. I wrote this little quote, God provides daily what we need and he allows forks in the road, seasons of failure, change, unknown, heartache, and trials for his glory and our good. He is purposeful in all he does and he calls us to trust him and hope in him in all seasons. And that was from the Grace Scripts on Instagram. So that was comforting. And then here is today and that's it. So I just, I love this book so much. Um... The only thing back here that I put this little flag for is I'm, I've been loving podcasts. They've been enriching me and helping my mindset and just helping me stay focused and inspiring me. So I've been listening to them almost every day. And so I just decided I would write all the podcasts that I listen to, um, on here just for fun. And so, yeah, I'm liking that as well. And that is it. So I would love to know what you guys think. If you have any thoughts, ideas, or if you're using the cousin, leave your links down below because I love me a cousin flip through. Like that is what I search for every day, just waiting for a new one to pop up. Anyways, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye guys.